Welcome to a new lesson of heat transfer. Today we continue our discussion of radiation and in particular we're talking about radiation between two surfaces. Let's consider so two black surfaces so surface one and surface two and surface one is at a temperature T1 so isothermal surface so constant temperature in uniform and the same for surface two that's isothermal surface with uh, temperature T2. So if T1 is different from T2, then we will have uh, an exchange of radiation, heat transfer by radiation, Q12. And what's Q12? Q12 is the radiation that leaves surface 1 and reaches surface 2 minus the radiation from surface 2 and that's reaching surface one. So we can write this as Q12 equal to A1 EB1 times F12. So EB1 is the spectral power for a black body times A1. So we get watts times the view factor because we need to consider the ge geometrical um, limitation of the problem. So F12 uh, signifies that only part of this, all the whole radiation that leaves surface 1 actually reaches surface 2. And the same thing the other way around from surface 2 to surface 1. So we note here we have A1, F12, and here we have A2 times F21. So all we have to do now is use the reciprocity rule. If you remember, the reciprocity rule is A1 times F12 equal A2 times F21. So the expression Q12 simplifies because we can use this relationship and we can just have here in parentheses the difference between the two spectral powers. And since we have black surfaces, then EB1, EB2 can be written as sigma T1 to the fourth power minus sigma T2 to the fourth power. And we have to remember here to use Kelvin as units for the temperature. Whereas if you study convection or conduction problem, that doesn't matter if we use Kelvin or Celsius because these two temperature scales are linearly related to each other. So the difference is always the same. Now we can ask ourselves, what happens instead if we don't have black bodies as surfaces, but we have surfaces that are actually real surfaces, for example, opaque, diffuse, and gray in general. So in this case, we can assume, so the emissivity epsilon is different from one. So it's a constant number. So the physics is different. We discussed this previously. Since the surface is gray, the emissivity is different from one. That's equal to the absorptiv absorptivity because of Kirchhoff's law. And the energy arriving at the surface is not all absorbed like in a black body, but part of it is actually reflected back to the environment. And also that the energy emitted by the surface itself is smaller than black body emitted energy because Epsilon, the emissivity, is smaller than 1. So these two physical ideas can be represented graphically like this. So G is the incident radiation from the environment, from other surfaces. Part of this energy is reflected back to the environment, so that's rho times G, where the rho is a reflectivity. So it's a non-dimensional number smaller than 1 and part of it, alpha g, is absorbed into the surface. And alpha is the absorptivity. And then we also have epsilon eb, that's the emitted power by the surface itself. And the sum between the reflected amount of energy, rho g, plus epsilon eb, the emitted power, it's called radiosity. And two important relationship we can use now are the Kirchhoff's law, so epsilon equal alpha, so the emissivity is equal to the absorptivity, and also 
we don't have any transmittivity, transmissivity, so the absorptivity plus the reflectivity is equal to 1 because of conservation of energy. So the ratiocity, so the sum between the emitted power and the reflected power, so epsilon eb plus rho g, can be written in this way. Instead of rho, we write 1 minus alpha, but alpha is equal to epsilon. So this is the final expression we get for the radiosity. So radiosity is the total radiation that leaves a gray surface. Note that if epsilon is equal 1, this part here is zero, so there is no reflected power. And epsilon is 1, so j is equal to eb. That's also equal to sigma t to the fourth power. So that's the energy that leaves the surface. But what's the actual net radiation that a surface, a gray surface, experiences? Well, that must be the difference between the energy that leaves the surface by radiation because of emission and reflection, that's the radiosity, minus the energy gained from the incident radiation from the environment, from other surfaces. So the net is Q equal A times the difference between the radiosity J and the incident radiation G. But G has an expression. We can find a useful expression by rearranging this equation. So we solve this equation for G and we substitute here. So we eliminate G from here. What is G? G, the incident radiation, written in terms of the radiosity J. G is equal J minus epsilon EB divided 1 minus epsilon. So if we substitute in the expression from the net radiation exchange between the two surfaces, Q is equal to A that multiplies J minus the ratio between J minus epsilon EB divided by 1 minus epsilon. So at the end, we reach to this neat expression. And now we note that Q equal to this expression is in a form that's familiar to us because we have a difference between two quantities that drives the heat transfer and we have a coefficient in front. So we can use the network analysis. So the network analysis analogy that uh, was used in the study of heat conduction. So the net Q can be written in this form. But now we introduce a surface resistance. So we write Q as the ratio between EB minus J divided by R, where R is 1 minus epsilon divided by the area A times epsilon. So EB minus J plays the role of a potential difference that drives the thermal radiation. Q is instead a current in the analogy of a network, electric network, so a current now of heat transfer. And R is a resistance due to the surface being gray. So for a black body, this resistance is exactly zero. So we can represent this surface resistance in this way. So we have a piece of network. And at the nodes, we have E, B, and J. Now, if you remember, in the analysis of conduction at the nodes, we had the temperature. So here the analogy is slightly different because we have E, B, and J at the nodes, but we still have Q that flows through the network. We have to be really careful because this surface resistance here is a conceptual resistance. It's not a physical resistance that we can actually visualize it right away, like in the case of conduction. In the case of conduction, the resistance was actually due to the solid being there. Here, we don't have anything physical. We don't have a thickness of a material of any sort. It's just a resistance that expresses the fact that not all the 
maximum thermal radiation is emitted by the surface just like in the case of black surface because the emitted power is smaller because the surface is gray there is an epsilon emissivity that's smaller than one so now we can put all the pieces together and we can write a network between two gray surfaces so we have a surface one and surface two we write a network where the nodes are eb1 and eb2 are the two extremes and in between we have two nodes j1 and j2 this surface uh, surfaces exchange heat q the exchange heat must be a1 f12 times the difference between j1 and j2 so we can write q as j1 minus j2 divided by r12 and we call this a space resistance it's 1 divided by a times f12 the view factor so now we have a resistance due to the fact that not all the maximum thermal radiation is exchanged between the two surfaces because the two surfaces are in a certain particular orientation with respect to each other and that limits the exchange between the two surfaces so at the end we have a network we have three series in series sorry three resistances in series two resistances due to the fact that two surfaces are gray and we have a resistance in the middle due to the fact that we have a particular orientation between the two surfaces so we have a view factor and we can solve problems like this we can you can find in the book for example more complicated cases we're not going to have time to do it in which you can arrange different surfaces in enclosure and have more complicated network so this ends our discussion and thank you very much